Hello and welcome back to a new English tutorial series. We are here with the Flight Factor Boeing 767 um, in the freighter version at Memphis. Today we are going to take this aircraft from Memphis to Louisville and in this kind of tutorial we are going step by th step through the whole process of turning the aircraft on, flying it and turning the aircraft off afterwards. So all of this in this tutorial. I think for all the German viewers we will make a German tutorial um, anytime soon, but for now it's just the English tutorial for the Boeing 67. And I would say let's get into it. Okay. So as always, I will fly from the first officer's seat. You can fly from the captain's seat, of course, too. Nothing will change from this tutorial but the perspective. You can set your default position in the Avitab or in the tablet in the EFB provided in the aircraft. That means if you're pressing your button to turn on the 3D cockpit view, your view is automatically changing to the first officer. Um, for example, in the Zebo or in mostly all other aircrafts, like the Flight Factor 777, you have to have a hotkey so on your numpad on the keyboard to pan the view from here over to here. Uh, that's something I really like about it. What I don't like about it, if you or while you press the 3D button, you're in the captain seat, and when you release it, your view just switches over to the first officer. That's weird and I don't know why it is, but okay, so don't get distracted by this. If we're in the outside perspective, I push the button, we're in the captain, I release the button and we're there where we want it. Don't be distracted, but I think we make it. Okay, um, so some basic stuff. We've got the standard, so the um, default setup of the avionics. I don't have the um, add-on with the modern avionics because I don't like it. Um, that's something you can um, buy for I think it's around 20 um, dollars, 20 US dollars. Um, and then you have the modern screens in here uh, like you know from most other aircrafts. They're different, they have a very very weird uh, side ratio but you get used to it, um, and you can use this tutorial for it too. Just you need to control your display units a bit different. Okay, so as always, before we start, we do the um, overview in the cockpit. Starting at the overhead, then the MIP, and then down to the pedestal. That is the overhead of the Boeing 67 or 767 if you think the whole name but I'm just cutting it okay so you know the setup from basically all Boeing aircrafts which are later than 737 so 747 757 747 kind of different but I think you get used to it when you have uh, experience in 747 777 of course very very similar 757 exactly the same and uh, 787 a different color they don't use this brown they use a gray like you normally expected in an aircraft um, that's something you get used to. So if you have experience in any of these aircrafts, in any Boeing aircraft, because there are always similarities between them, you have a kind of knowledge of how this is working. Okay. So over here we've got our IRS panel, like you know, in all other aircrafts, the yaw damper, the hydraulic and electronic pumps, in the bottom line we have the light switches for exterior interior our uh, battery and standby so here we've got our electric power a second panel for electric power management where you get your power is it from the APU from the engines all that stuff then we've got our APU which is electric power too so you can say this whole row is just to 
electrically power the aircraft. Down below you have the voice recorder, you can't do anything with it, it's just static. Um, speaking of this panel, we've got our cargo heat, which is heating the cargo box below the passenger cabin. Our ram air, which we need to have in an emergency situation. Engine starts and fuel pumps. Fuel quantity. Anti-icing our rain repellent and wipers and there below we have the light panel as I already told over here the fuel jettison is to dump fuel window heat an HF panel a circle panel a passenger signs cabin altitude management cabin altitude gorgeous equipment cooling we don't need this just say an auto, so this is an important panel. And below, again, the lights. Over to here, we've got temperature control about cabin and cockpit. We've got the trim air and um, the fans where we just need to turn them on, but that's coming later. Um, and the packs and some basic stuff about the bleed and the pressurization. So this is the pressurization panel with the cabin pressurization. Here we've got engine and fuel control. Here we've got electrical control and uh, that down here is hydraulical control. Next step is the main instrument panel and the flight control unit. So we've got the autopilot which is very very different. We've got two panels for the VHF and HF management for frequencies. Um, that's weird. We don't have it in any other aircraft I personally know. Um, but yeah, you get used to it. It's it's completely different and uh, oh, I just pressed a view and it's not very very likely to use and uh, to understand but we covered that. Down here you've got your screens which can be pop out you can pop out every of the screens. Then you have light controls at the right and the left, the auto brake switch, landing gear lever, engine control, engine control displays, standby instruments, which aren't standby instruments in this aircraft. For example, for airspeed, you need this standby gauge because it's not displayed digitally. So let's just call them gorgeous and not standby gorgeous. Okay, now we are at the lower and upper pedestal. We've got our CDUs, uh, our controls for the N and MFD. Uh, that's something you wouldn't find down here. You would have found. Uh, where's the view? Not panning. You would have found up here where we've got our VHF. Uh, you have your communication panel, your squawk panel, engine fire controls, uh, the radio controls up here, and below here you have trim and some more radio frequencies. We need to tune them later. And over here you have your weather radar. Okay. And there is a, another panel. Okay, I haven't got a view for it, which is this one down here don't use it so you can make some things up here but just ignore this panel because everything you can set here will probably destroy your flight so you can check that the system selectors are normal you can the data selector can be set to the captain or the FO we set it to the FO and um, the rest normal and all of these are should be in the normal position you don't need to cover this um, you have some knobs down here. I can show you some of the uh, functionality, but it isn't important. Okay, let's take a seat. Okay, the next step is the electronic flight pack. Um, here you can set FO in control. If the FO is not in control, you have your EFB up here. If the FO is in control, you have your EFB here below the headphones or you can pop it up via your plug-in menu okay we 
technicality EFB later on. So, now you have a complete overview of the cockpit. We will start to start up the aircraft now. So, back in the overhead. We can now start to power on the aircraft. We start to power on the aircraft by using the battery, open the cover, press the button and close the cover. Now wait some time and you see the lights are um, turning on. Stand by to auto even more lights and then base bus ties and utility buses. Now you need just to wait some time, the aircraft is starting and you can go to Operation Ground. Um, that is the only thing which will be different depending on which version you're using. If you're using passenger or the freight version. Um, we have for example a passenger bus and a gate config not on this aircraft but on the others. Around here you have a slightly different graphic and a slightly different um, numbers to add. You have a PAX number for the passengers, you have a PAL number which are the crew. So yeah, you get it. Okay, uh, what we need is the high pressure unit the stairs, the chocks, the GPU, the waste unit, the loader unit, and the fuel truck. Okay, now you can enter in your maintenance which you find down here. Just press maintenance has been successfully performed. Why you need you need to press this button this aircraft is equipped with random failure meaning it can happen that you fly and that at any time in your flight something will happen um, the hydraulic pressurization is basically always failing when something is going wrong that's so annoying so press maintenance Please press maintenance. Okay, so next we enter in our data. We have a block fuel of 10.3 thousand kilograms. That's a fuel weight, so 10. Um, yeah, we just round to 400. The cargo weight we have, uh, let's see, we go down into the papers. Um, I know you can't see Simbrief, um, I will show you later. Um, but depending on which version you're using, so which F O F P plan, um, I'm using United, it will be different, so uh, just use it um, in your standard and um, you probably know where you get all your information. Okay, so that's 4000 kilograms for now. And let's say we have, yeah, two is okay, we have two pilots. Um, it's not a long flight, so we don't need a third man in the cockpit. Okay. Press optimize center of gravity. This will optimize the center of gravity in the aircraft loading. That's important because later you could have some um, issues with the the aircraft's trim. Okay. Basically everything is done. You can now press load unload. Oh, okay, we forgot something. You have to open the doors, of course. That was my mistake. Um, so you can go into the outside view, and then you can see where you have. Oh, whoa, that was that was huge. And I can, for example, open the maintenance door, which is looking fantastic. It's phenomenal. Love it. Is he? Mm, okay. Huh? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, I thought the GPU is going through our main gear, but it's it's behind. That's great. Okay. Um. I just turned on the um, ground power unit and now we can load and unload. Okay. Um, over here we can do some of the, uh, let's say, customization features. Mm. We have dynamic blinds, that's just important if you're flying on the passenger versions because you have these window blinds which are going up and down depending on how the sun is um, going or shining into your 
aircraft. I don't know who is using it, but it's turned on for the fighter, but I turned it off for every of the passenger versions. It is disgusting. You have a wing view, then the sun is coming and the blind is down and you have to re recreate a wing view. Turn it off. I turn it off for the for this version, um, but you don't need it to turn it off in the fighter. You can turn it off in the cabin or in the passenger version as you like. Auto gear lever. Um, I recommend to turn it off. That means if you got your gear lever to up, it will automatically switch to the off position after um, the gear is retracted. I don't know why it was um, it was on, but that is no, not the thing I want. And the winglets, you can turn them on and off. I use them. If you don't like them, turn them off. Um, you can enter the wing flex how um, let's say how strong the wing flex is I don't know who is needing that but if you're needing it <laughs> you can adjust it here I just fly with the defaults um, let's go to options avionics you have so many features I personally don't really like it because it's too much it's way too much um, if you like it, you can use it. You can just click through it and say, "Oh, yeah, I like that. I don't like that." That's my settings. I'm happy with it. If not, change it for your version. Okay. Mm, you have so many features. Um, the only thing I want to adjust because I um, haven't flown this aircraft after an update, so every of my settings, and that's probably why the auto gear was on, is now. I changed. I don't want the um, the blur level of the displays that high. Uh, let's let's turn it off a bit. That's the lamp glow. Yes, or oh, isn't it? No, it isn't. Ah, yeah, exactly. That is okay. Great. I mean, you see the difference. I don't know. I turn it off. Okay. Great. Now we can turn on the aircraft. External power is on. Next, we go over to the IRS panel. Go into heading, turn all of them on to align on disk. Wait for the on DC light to turn off. And the window heats can be turned on. We arm the lights, the yaw damper. What you see here is now the fuel quantity rising. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, we had more fuel than we needed, so it's lowering. Okay, that's not realistic at all. Um, normally it should rise, but we had more than we needed, so it's going down. A line, a line, a line. So, nav, nav, nav. And then you can go into your. FMC. Mm, I recommend to have a shortcut for it. You can use the pop out or I don't know hardware if you have it. Go to position and enter your current airport. We're currently at Memphis, Kilo Mike, at your mic. And then copy the position into the set IRS position panel. When you go now on the root page, you see Memphis is automatically um, pasted in because that's right, we need Memphis. We're flying to Louisville, Kilo Sierra, Delta Fox. Over here, we are a FedEx 767. Enter it to flight number. If you have co route, which you have to save into the flight factor Boeing 767 folder, which can be found in your aircraft directory Boeing 767 extended or 767 if you don't have the extended version with fright and then co -roots. what you paste in here is the downloaded co root flight plan from Simbrief for 75 and 767 by flight factor I don't have a co root for now because I want to show you how to enter in the correct waypoints click next page okay um, 
you're probably familiar with that if you're flying other aircrafts too. You have VI and a 2 page. That's the page you get at the Airbus uh, when you go to the uh, waypoint and then say Airways. That's the same page on Airbus, um, but this page is typically for Boeing if you're just going to the next page. Um, you may know what I mean. If not, that's no problem at all because we just need this one. Okay, so we can now enter in. We're flying to a die jab. Die jab. That's a two. Two is a waypoint. Via is an airway. If you have an airway followed by a waypoint followed by an airway, for example, you can enter your airway to via, and then you can enter your next airway to via, and the two will be um, pasted in automatically. That's why you have here these dashed lines, meaning, okay, you can enter here something. If you enter here something, the dashed lines will go one down, saying, okay, you don't need this one, you can enter this one. Um, we're flying in the US, they're probably, well, normally, not using any uh, of these wires. You only have waypoints and very, very often VORs. That's the situation now, we're flying to Bravo November Alpha. And now you got this page. What is it? Okay, Bravo November Alpha is given to multiple waypoints. Or, um, in this case, it's VR and NDBs. We just call them waypoints. Okay, and now you go into your um, paperwork below um, your sim brief. I will show you in the United format. Um, if you're using the leader, which is standard, it will look different, but the basic information you get on both. And now you see here is DiJap, and here is Bravo November Alpha, which is the Nashville VR. You see the position, and um, if you're using another, you're seeing the frequency. So you can look, okay, which frequency does it have, or which coordinates does it have. We just look at the coordinates, which are 3608.2, so that can't be right, 3207 can't be right, uh, 1006 can't be right, 7010 can't be right, 3608, that's right. Now we can just look at the coordinates below. Or behind which is 086410 we check with our flat pen it's uh, 08 086411 um, so that is correct we have 410 there 41 um, it just is something you round when uh, when programming and flat vector is rounding other than the uh, that simple if it's doing so that's right click it okay the next point is a mabel which is like bravo uh, echo lima lima echo lima lima and then you're done okay now you can activate the root it's the mod so you can execute and it's active so the perf page um, again if you know any other Boeing aircraft, you know this page, and you know what to enter. Um, you can just click the correct, um, the correct boxes to tick them, and then they will automatically um, fill. Okay, reserve. I mean, um, we've got 10 tons, which is enough for the route. And normally, I plan with two tons extra fuel in sim brief. So we enter 2, our cruising altitude is 290, 290, and the cost index. That is now depending on which uh, format and sim brief, again on which format and sim brief you are using. I'm using United, so I check just in this. Um, if you're using Lido, it will look at it. If you're using a Lufthansa, a I don't know, I think Turkish is in there, um, another United American, all of the big airlines um, are in there, Air France, um, that would look different, 
uh, but it's a cool feature, I like it. And you can choose the airline you like. And then you have just to uh, think, okay, it's different, what do I need? And we have, um, I see, we have a CI, so a cost index of 250. Okay, now you don't need to take off page. Flaps 5 for today. If there is invert entry, that's something you have to add manually. Okay. The thrust for takeoff. We do it to toga. And you can rotate this knob to your uh, selected temperature. Make just TO 45. TO. Okay. Uh, center of gravity, go back to your ground page. You see, CG center of gravity is 21. Trim 2.1, we set it. And then the, re the reference speeds can select on, and just by clicking them, the aircraft is calculating them. That's different, for example, in 737, they're always on, and you just click them, and then you turn them off different. Okay, departure and arrival. That is depending of the current weather situation. I'm using X-Enviro, so I'm going to weather briefing and searching for Memphis, KMM. Press enter. Okay, don't work. Press search. And you have your current um, meter. The wind is coming from 040. You can just click through runways, but that sounds like the what we've done here? 3 6. Uh, that's a uh, foot J, and that is. Okay. So we take 3 6. Okay. Which runway now? Um, we go back to our EFB. You can use Avita, but it's integrated in this one, so why not using it? Um, not registered. Oh no. Um, oh yeah, that's because. Uh, okay. I will just register to my Navigraph, um, that's because of the update, I hadn't thought about this, and then we see when I'm registered. Okay, that was successfully, so we can say Memphis now, and you have all of your pages here. Uh, approach and airport, we need the airport and airport information. Uh, isn't here... Okay, here is in the dark mode layout. Huh. That's bad. Okay. Let's work with the normal layout. Okay. Um I just really slide it. Okay, we just don't care about these ten degrees. We take runway nine because that's far far closer. And that could be a normal operation. They could say, Okay, you're closer to Niner, so would you like to take from Niner? Um, that's something you can see in the ATIS. Um, it can sound like this departure runway 36 center and 36 left, runway 9 are on request. Then you just request it. Okay, mm, why I open up the charts is we, I wanted to look which runway I, do I need uh, uh, of the 36s, but I don't do it. That's way too far. So take runway 9 with the goats 7 goats 7 um, our first waypoint is digep so the digep transition and then execute it you can go now onto the route page I think we have to write it like that so the nana and then you are done um, it's possible to enter route 2 you can use it when you have to divert due to weather. Um, outer version would be Charlie Victor Golf. Um, I think that should be Cincinnati. It should be Cincinnati. Um, I just will look because I don't want to tell. Yeah, right. It's Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. So I could enter the road to there. You can find the waypoints you need into your paper. 
but that's something we don't do in this tutorial. Okay, FMC pre-flight is done. And it took so long that our displays are already aligned. We can turn on the lower display, switching from the engine to the status page. The pages are very, very similar to all other Boeing aircraft pages. So you're probably aware of how it works. But we covered it later. Okay, now we turn on some panel lights, which just make the aircraft look better. Okay, and down here we can, uh, 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 so like this. Okay, we can go on plan. You can zoom in and out here. You can activate, for example, airport, the data, the waypoint, all you need. Weather, if you need. Okay. Uh, now you go to the legs, step, and you can step through the route. Okay, that's a vector. <laughs> oh man, so just zoom out a bit. That's your route. Judge you, goats, Dijer, and then up to Louisville. N nothing interesting. I don't do this plan check for every flight, I do it when entering in the. Um, Arrival, so to check if the arrival is okay. Auto brakes go to on, and we have a small self test. Um, yeah, go down here, can turn on, weather off. That's the weather self test. Um, great, okay. So, auto brakes to RTO, as I, th as I told, and then. You can visit this panel, we have selected Toga, 45 degrees, entered, that's great. Um, here you can cancel all your clearances, or recall, um, that's, you probably know it, uh, when flying 737 you have the uh, Master Caution and the Six Pack, and that's the recall, and that's how you do it in this aircraft, like you would do it in every other aircraft of Boeing 2. You have a recall button and a cancel button. Okay, log a light on. Uh, position light on, turn the packs on, auto, auto, engine start can uh, stay 1 or 2, the selector can go to auto 1 or auto 2, I take auto 1, landing altitude, um, how high is the airport of Louisville? We will just check that. Um, we have Louis, but altitude is 500 feet. Then turn on the pumps. Turn on the demands and start the APU. Going to on, white, and start. Okay. Uh, the temperature, the temperature selectors are to auto. That's the easiest way to do. Um, if you think it's too cold, you can, of course, turn them warm, cold, as you like. But auto is the way to go in the simulator. The isolation on, center on, and I'll just wait for the APU. It indicates run. Hydraulical pumps on. You see, all of these three, these three lights are turned off. If you don't perform the maintenance check um, before you are powering the aircraft, you could run into the problem that one of these lights will be on, and you later have a problem with the hydraulical pressurization, which we don't want. We don't want any problems. We like it when everything is working which is yeah obvious okay the APU switch as you heard is fl flipped back to the on position that is great because that means the APU started you see it indicates the APU jump is off we take it to on and unpack the external power um, now we can just go to ground and say goodbye to it Important.
first turn it off, then turn it off in the EFB. If you haven't turned on the APU, you won't have any power. If you let both to on, your bus ties will just be activate, deactivated, not activated, and you have a loss of power. Now you can remove the stairs, the chocks, the waste unit, the loader unit, and the fuel truck. Go to airplane and say close all. That is very, very great. Okay. APU bleed on. And now you hear the APU bleed. That is the APU bleed working in the background. I just turned the x volume a bit down so you can hear me better because we don't need the sound. Okay. Everything is done now to start pushing back. I press the button I've selected to drive up the tow without finding a flight plan. Why? Um, it's easier, I think, to just let the tug connect, then request clearance if you're flying online, and then working with your f push plan, let's say, push plan. Um, if you don't have it like that, plan the push. You can plan the push or start a push via the EFB. Um, should be possible in Zebra Mod 2. I personally never ever use this, um, but that's just a personal re reference, I think. Okay, you see the toe is connected. Oh, we've got the smaller toe. Okay, uh, to be honest, I thought we got the big one, but as long as it has enough power, everything is okay. Next one to auto. All doors and hatches are close, ready to connect. Ready to connect. Okay. Enter in 1000, no, 1000, and everything should be set. Okay, what's that for a weird view? Now I will wait until the tuck is connected and start to push back. As soon as we're pushing back, I meet you again. Okay, now we've got um, the clearance to release the park brake. We will do it. Turn it on. Packs off. And the pushback is in progress. So, now we wait until we clear the gate to not damage every anything by starting the engines. Okay. What we can do in this, in the meantime, we go back to weather briefing. Uh, look, 2997. Um, this one, 2997, 2997, and careful, you've got a third one, 2997. Um, I just like to turn on the lights for it, should be this one, is it right? No, it is, just sadly. Uh, this one, come on, why? Blue light? Oh, man, hmm. should be should be any of these lights. <laughs> yeah, um, that's so uh, a thing you just um, work on reference. Um, I'm not that used to the aircraft, but I know the functions. So that's something we're gonna find out. Okay, now we start the engines. We start in the sequence 2, 1, meaning we turn this one on, go on to the engine page, and you have this pink marker when your engine is reaching it, you can turn on the right fuel valve, and then you see the engine is starting. From this position, it's the left engine which is starting. Stand 
Ah, there it is. Now we wait for the knob. It's all auto again. Second one, ground. So now it reaches pink and field controller. Now we go into the rear, 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 rear pedal. Okay. Uh, okay, we set it already. Forget about it. And then. Uh, thank you for the pushback that I can't see you through my aircraft. Okay. Everything is done. You can turn on the cargo heats now. Mm, it's back, so we can turn on. No, we can turn down much auto. The plate's on. Left engine plate is off, that's okay. You see over here, that's off too. We just wait. Now we need both generators. And now you can turn off the APU. Wait some time, and then you can get out the generator. It indicates off always when the APU is available, but it's not used. So, meaning the APU is now cooling down and it's uh, indicating, okay, APU is still available. Continuous, continuous. Check if the pushback has removed, that's right, and then you can turn on the nose wheel light. Okay, this tutorial took way too long until this point, which, which is um, why I say goodbye for now. The rest will be in the next part. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope this will help you to turn on Boeing 767 from Flight Factor or Boeing 757 from Flight Factor. That's basically the same. And then we meet uh, next Friday, 3 p.m. See you. Goodbye.